I'm the magpie! And uh, this Monday, this is where I'm gonna start. Turns out that was a glorious idea. Okay, so for this video, I want to do one circuit bend <laughs> here and one only, and I'm gonna talk about why uh, later when I have done that. But we can see here one IC, one ship, and that one, according to my research, takes care of all the accompaniment type things. And then on the other side of this one, we have a huge one here. And that one has a very easily accessible, at least for a screwdriver, clock source. Which is that 
thing. So what I intend to do is simply replace that one. I make it sound so easy. Oh yeah, I'm gonna replace it with an LTC 1799, which I have done in a couple of videos before this video. And uh, actually, it's something where we have started exploring making our own smart little circuit bending thingies that's hopefully, yeah, gonna be something that I'm gonna talk a lot more about in the future. But as of right now, you can actually go to magpiestuff.com and you can get a pre-prepared PCB that you can order yourself, which is my take on doing a little PCB for an LTC 1799 with some quirks on it that I figured would be very practical for me to have. So. It's free, you can just download that, you're free to support us if you want to. But yeah, more info in the future. I just wanted to say that things exist. But yeah, this little thing has three legs that we are interested in, going into two pins on this IC here. So they go in on pin eight and nine. One of those is hopefully all that we need to plug in our new clock source to, but we kind of need to figure out which one because all the solder points with the yellowish nastiness around it is what That one goes towards a ship. Hmm. Okay. So, I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually know what to think. So, in, I'm not gonna bother thinking. I'm just gonna do. <laughs> yeah. Ta da! Done did it. Surprisingly easy to get rid of. So I am simply going to uh, deal with that. <laughs> I think I'm gonna try to just solder to one of those points. Like, yeah. Uh, mm. No problem. Wait, that's all I had to do was wire it to that point. Okay. 
Yeah. Also, I noticed this. Like before I do anything. So, yeah, uh, naturally, so I made a video on this recently, the CK500 by Cosio, and you, like I asked for suggestions in the comment section on how I should hack it, and I got a lot of suggestions, so thank you very much. I actually explored a lot more off camera than is shown on camera. For example, this switch here, which is a keyboard tape radio switch. I was hopeful because I did a modification on a Cosio CK10, but it's just a PT1 with a radio, and with that one I was able to very easily attach a tiny piece of tape to like the inside of this switch to make it yeah possible to play the keyboard at the same time as you play the radio. Uh, with this one however not at all as easy it's actually really hard just to access this switch and it's one of those mechanical switches that has a heck of a lot of pins in like two rows so I don't know which ones I have to like attached together in order for it to turn on the keyboard when it switched up to radio mode. So that's super annoying. Like I tried for a while before I decided to give up. Uh, but I might do it in the future, uh, maybe. Another thing that you also suggested was to, you know, do a no input type modification on it because we have a separate output, like an RCA stereo output here and a microphone input. So I tried a bunch of things with, uh, yeah, jumping to the microphone from both of the outputs actually, but it, do it doesn't work. And I noticed that it was way cooler to go with a mixer, to like plug it out into a mixer and then aux back into it. So I didn't feel as sad at that point, but after that is where we jump to where this video starts because of course most of the suggestions was in regards to the dual cassette play recorder that we have here and I looked at it like this for like several hours and then I realized that if I just cut off the plastic here like I did then I can like make it so one tape and run over to the other side and go into another tape. So when this one plays, it is pulling the tape from this one. Yeah, it's pulling it over. And then if I record on this one, it's gonna be like a tape echo, you would assume. But since we have the dubbing function, so it's constantly recording back from this tape, to that tape, it becomes a, a looper, or like a really weird degrading delay that is constantly gonna loop it back and slowly but surely just completely destroy. Because it's also, <laughs> it's recording all of the, the noise over and over and over again. And walking to the right. I don't know if that has to do with the mono versus stereo thing at all.
Yeah, uh, you can uh, you can get very crazy very fast, <laughs> which is really really cool. But with this setup, I then decided not to do any tape speed modifications and stuff like that, at least for now, because based on the assumption that one tape running slower than the other tape when I put them both in play is gonna not be great because there's it's, there's the danger that tape starts building up in here, so. I don't know, I could maybe, but I, I really wanted to keep this part so that I have it looking very much like nothing has been done whatsoever. It just happens to have this very, very unique function, I would say. Like, have you ever seen anything like this before with a keyboard that has a tape looper? on it <laughs> it's just really really cool and very very easy to do also kind of finicky but at least you don't have to put together a tape loop there's one drawback though which is that if i now uh, reverse that one stop then if i play then of course we have all of those sounds recorded now Meaning that I can't really overdub without it also overdubbing this. But maybe there is a trick to doing that with, you know, pressing them down. Yeah, something always happens if you press them down, but not all the way there. There's all kinds of finicky little tricks you can do. Anyways, doesn't really matter. I did record audio, like a segment here, before I decided to also add a circuit band because I was worried that, okay, this is so cool. So if I end up breaking it now when trying to circuit band it, it's gonna be such a bummer to not be able to brag about how cool this thing is that I created. <laughs> so I recorded that and then I went straight into circuit bending it. And yeah, that just turns out to be really cool also. And now we're gonna get a tiny bit information heavy here. So this one, I already had some clues. I was like, oh, the drums, it, it really reminds me of how you do sounds in the Casio uh, MT400V that I happen to ha have. And I asked you if you know, like, do you think you know what it is here on the inside? And as soon as I looked inside and I Googled the numbers on the ICs on the inside, I realized that there's a couple at least that I could find online that all use the same ship setup, which is, it's all of these. And there was a really cool clue that let me know that there, you actually just have to circuit bend one of the ships and then that one, if you do a speed modification, like a oscillator replacement, click, clock, clickety clock. <laughs> you only have to do that on one of the ships and then that ship actually clocks the other one. And it goes from the one taking care of the melody, so all of these things and playing on the keyboard, that chip actually clocks the accompaniment chip. And then all of the rest, like th there's actually a lot of analog uh, circuitry in regards to the sound generation, which is really, really cool. That means that I could go in and do a lot more than just circuit bending. I could actually go in and modify like noise sources and envelopes and stuff like that if I feel like it. But it's not something that I want to start off doing on one of these. So hopefully I can get one of the smaller, like the MT65 or something like that. Like Actually, honestly, let me say, if anybody feels like donating, I know this is weird, but if anybody has like, oh, I got shitty old Cosios laying around that I don't need anymore. If anybody feels like donating it to me, I wouldn't have to have to spend all my money, or at least any money. I wouldn't have to spend any money. If uh, you uh, If you are nice, then I don't have to spend money. Thank you. <laughs> and then my idea is to put up as much information as possible in regards to everything that I do with hacking Cosios and other keyboards and toys and stuff over on magpiestuff.com. But it's gonna take a while to do that, but yeah, I'm gonna start doing it. So hopefully some of you enjoy that because then it's gonna be a list like all of these Cosios has to exactly as identical insides in as far as what you can do with bends and stuff. So if you have one of those, these are some simple instructions for doing something like this. But yeah, 
I don't know if I missed any information now, I might have done, but it's taken me a while just to get to this point, so I want to make a separate video entirely where I do some no input stuff and play around more with the noises you can do with the radio and stuff like that, because apparently, I just noticed this now, it records from the radio to the tape, even though you can't listen back to the tape. Annoying with that sound though. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. Hallå och kväll, hur är läget? Tjenare på dig. 